This week on Maker Update, an RGB kayak, CNC foam cutting, artificial sunlight, glowing swords, measuring holes, and how to use weird displays. Hello and welcome back to Maker Update. I'm Tyler Weingartner and it's been a week. I hope you're all doing well. As for me, anytime I get to go down to my shop and build something, it helps me relax and escape from the chaos that's out in the world. That's going to be the theme for this week's show, a little bit of escapism. So let's get started with the project of the week. Have you ever learned a new maker discipline and found yourself asking a ton of off the wall questions that would probably debase everything your mentor is trying to teach you? This learning process is the origin story for Xyla Foxland's party kayak. If you recall, last year in quarantine, she built a wooden canoe from scratch. And in that process, she asked herself, can you build a wooden canoe without the wood? What's happening here is she's using a plastic kayak as the buck for a multi-layer fiberglass layup to make the hull and the deck of the boat. At some point, she realized that the kayak would be translucent instead of transparent. So she covered the inside of the kayak with a dressable RGB LED strip to light up the canoe from the inside, making it a spectacle on the water. What I found really interesting is how she laid out each layer of fiberglass in a different direction, like the wood grain in plywood. This makes the structure a whole lot stronger. She also had to lay up each successive layer before the previous layer fully cured to make sure they bonded together properly and wouldn't delaminate. This is a fun explorative experimental build that I absolutely love. But I also have to salute Xyla for approaching a project like this with the realest of deadlines. She built this during her last few days in Ohio before moving to California. The fiberglass layup days were well over 19 hours long. And the footage of her first launch on the Cuyahoga River was the night before she left the state. Whether you're curious about fiberglass layup or you just want to see what it's like to take a weird idea to its conclusion, it's a satisfying watch. More projects. Last week we mentioned Adam Savage's new foam cutter from Proxon. And this week I saw this DIY CNC foam cutter from How To Mechatronics. At first glance this looks like a 3D printer, but only the X and Z axes are controlled. You can cut out flat designs easily enough, but there's also a turntable to rotate the foam piece to create more complex shapes. Included in the link is a build of materials, STLs, and code to build your own. Over on Hackaday, I found this DIY laser tag game from Zassin. It's a weird time to play games about shooting each other, but this looks like the perfect way to get some socially distanced exercise with a few pals. Each pistol hides an ESP32 to handle firing the IR beam, managing signals from the receiver, and communication with the Raspberry Pi server that manages the game and the rules. There's also plenty of lights, sounds, and plenty more to come as development of the game progresses further. DIY Perks has been making videos about building DIY video and lighting gear for a while now, but he's really outdone himself with this one, an artificial sun for filmmaking. Making an artificial sun is more than just getting the right brightness and color temperature. Sunlight also has near parallel light rays because the source is so far away. To achieve this, he's using a 36 volt, 100 watt LED element with its own liquid cooling unit, and then pointing it at a parabolic dish covered in reflective film to align the rays. This is a hyper specific build, but there's a bunch of cool engineering in it, and it's great to see somebody just going for it. Over the break, I spent an embarrassing amount of time in the night city of Cyberpunk 2077. And in my defense, it's rich with visual inspiration. So it's no surprise that there are a ton of projects based on that game world. What I wasn't expecting was this build video for a replica prop glowing thermal katana from Chao Chen Fang. Instead of embracing the high-tech, low-life world of cyberpunk to build this katana, it's all manual work. Handsaws, chisels, and sanding. It's a deep meditation on a beautiful aesthetic. And the final result is a wonder to behold. Time for some tips and tools. By way of Sean Michael Reagan, I learned about these 3D printed feet you can add to your digital calipers to help you measure the distance between two holes. If you've ever done this before, you know it's a fiddly affair of eyeballing the center of the holes with the jaws of your caliper and hoping you got it right. 
With these, you drop the cones into the holes to help align the jaws for a better measurement. It's a super quick print, so maybe give it a try. Drew Fustini has shared this design for a flexible PCB battery tester on his GitHub page. If you have a ton of these LED candles left over from the holidays, and you want to know which batteries need replacing, this might be the perfect tool to give them a once over before putting them into storage. Just fold it over both sides of the battery and it'll let you know if it's still good. Shop organization is a constant bugbear for any workspace. And in this video by Adam Savage, he tackles his electronics cart, which has feature creeped its way into an unmanageable mess. He starts out by figuring out which tools and components absolutely need to be there and clears everything else out. Overall, it's a deep dive on shop infrastructure and how to make a small space into a highly functional one. Over on Adafruit, I found this guide from Phil Burgess on using weird displays for your Raspberry Pi. LCDs, CRTs, square, circular projection, analog displays, it's pretty thorough. The good news is that if you're running a Raspberry Pi 4 or the new Pi 400, most of these are plug and play. From there, he talks you through how to fine tune the image of your display, so it's showing the correct resolution, aspect ratio, and even how to adjust HDMI timings. Just don't expect any advice on how to use triangular displays. I guess those are a little too weird. And in Chao Chen Fang's Cyberpunk Atana video, she builds this small makeshift vacuum chamber out of a spring clip jar to degas her resin. She carefully drills a hole in the top and then seals it around a tube, and then uses a hand pump to pull the vacuum. If you only occasionally use resin in your shop and you haven't committed to a purpose-built pressure pot, give this one a look. It might just be what you need. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, they just released this video about how to use aluminum extrusion to build custom enclosures, frames for CNC machines, and more. Aluminum extrusion is a wildly versatile building material, since you can build just about any rectilinear structure with it. This video shows you how to cut the material, how to attach it to other pieces, add lighting, and even panels to enclose portions of your project. I've been building with this material a lot lately, and I'll add this piece of advice. Not all extrusion is the same, and every manufacturer has their own profile. Make sure to double check the CAD file of the cross section to make sure it meets your needs. All right, and that is gonna do it for this week's show. I know the internet has been a really exhausting place lately, and I'm so glad you took a break to spend time with us here. If you enjoyed this show, give us a thumbs up or leave us a comment, and hit subscribe so you won't miss the next one. As always, huge thanks to DigiKey for giving this show a home. Be good to yourself, and we'll see you soon.